When you think about the Mini Cooper, you can't but help think about the Italian job. The original as well as the remake. In both movies, the Mini played an integral part with the plot, where it was showcased as driving underground and the drivers not only making the getaway but having a blast doing it. That's essentially what this car is all about. It's an absolute blast to drive and it's been that way ever since it was made. Now, the 2014 version has come to India, and this car comes in a five-door as well as a three-door variant, both of them powered by a 1.5 diesel engine. We're here to take this for a drive and see what it packs and have our own flavor of the Italian job. Now, the Mini Cooper has always been a timeless design. You take into account the elements like the glass house ratio to the rest of the body, the squat look, the large headlights, the big grill, that guppy face, all of these characteristics have stuck with the Mini through time and with the new car, it's still the same. One thing that's different about the 2014 version, however, is the fact that it's a little bit bigger. As far as the interior layout to the Mini Cooper is concerned, the central theme has to be circles. It even starts with the key fob. Nice big circle disc thing over here. Then you've got the central display, the air conditioning vent circles again, your odometer and tachometer circles fitted together, speakers on the doors, nice big protruding circles. Having said that, it looks extremely cool. When Mini came out with this whole layout, it was considered a really retro appeal. In fact, on this car's predecessor, the odometer used to be over here, which luckily now they've moved back in front of the driver, where a lot of people like it today. Overall, there's really nothing you can argue. The fit and finish is commendable. The touch buttons are great. The start-stop button, nice little red switch on the dash. You've got the controls up here for your sunroof. Again, really nice switches, really good to feel. The materials used everywhere all sync together, come together and give you a very plush, sporty, young, retro cabin. Having said that, there is an increase, as I mentioned earlier, in the overall dimensions of this car. So you've got a little additional boot space, around 210 liters of it. And uh, you can move the seats to another adjust position where they're more upright to free up a little more space in case you don't want to fold them all the way down and use it as a two-seater. As for me, I would pretty much use this car only as a two-seater because one, the seat that you want to be in is the driver's seat because this car is an absolute blast to drive and I can't think of anywhere else I would fit. Powering the new Mini Cooper is a 1.5 liter diesel engine. This engine is capable of delivering 116 PS of max power at 4,000 RPM, and it delivers a max torque of 270 Newton meters at 1,750 RPM. The engine's made it to a nice six-speed gearbox, which also has a Tiptronic function, which allows you to use it like a manual. And while it's not the quickest car on the planet, you do go from zero to 100 in about 10 seconds. This car does deliver in terms of being an engaging vehicle to drive. Now, if you talk to anybody who's spent some time behind the wheel of a Mini Cooper, they're going to tell you that you take all the elements on the car to one side and its drive dynamics on the other. And the drive dynamics far outweigh everything else about this car. In fact, the real story with any Mini Cooper, including this one, is the way that the car drives. The torque suspension it's a little bumpy, but uh, at the same time, it gives you that added dynamism of keeping the car planted and like as if it's driving on rails. It goes around corners like nobody's business. And it's such an engaging drive 
you feel really connected, you're one with the vehicle, and it allows you to push it just as much as you wish around corners, fast and fast and as fast as you want to go. As far as the ride quality is concerned, the Mini Cooper doesn't really offer you that smooth plush ride that you would expect. But the reason is because it's not really meant to be a smooth plush car. It's meant to be a car that offers you that drive dynamism and that really fine handling. And for that, you need that tight suspension. There's no two ways about it. The car has to be tightly sprung. And while you do lose out in ride quality, what you do gain is that element of allowing you to push it hard and enjoy the twisties like nobody's business. So how do you sum up a car like this? Having lost two doors and being a three-door version, it makes the practicality aspect go out the door. It's hard to get into the back seat. The back seat itself is rather cramped. Best left for little kids or your golf bags. Having said that, it's also a car that's rather expensive. At 32 lakhs X showroom Delhi, it puts it straight up in BMW X1 as well as Mercedes-Benz A-Class territory. Both offerings are more practical than this. So where does the Mini really score? One is the three-part engine that delivers. It's fun to drive. It's engaging to drive and you have a blast when you're in the twisties. So what would I do with this car? Well, it would be a really expensive toy. It would be a car that I'd take out for a drive. And maybe, just maybe if I had the chance, I'd put in a bunch of gold bullion in the back and drive it through some tunnels in Eastern Europe.